In this video, we're going to make a flowchart of a vacuum automation. What is a vacuum automation? It's your robot friend that cleans the floor of your house. Ever wonder how it does its work? Let's make a flowchart. So to begin with, let's put an ellipse shape here. This shape means your start or your end of the flow. So start. Below our start is a parallelogram. This shape means data or status like on and off, one and zero, active and inactive, and so on and so forth. For this parallelogram, we'll put power on. This indicates that our automation is in a state of on. If this was off, then whatever came after this block will not work. Next up, we'll put up a rectangle. This shape means process. We're going to name this scan environment. After that, we place two more rectangles. We'll name the first one generate map and location. The other will be plan route. The plan route will have two directions. Beside it will be a document shape and naming it route. And below it will be a parallelogram. Naming it vacuum on. So two directions. The document shape literally means document, like a paper. But for our automation, it won't be a physical paper, but will be like a virtual cheat sheet for picking its route. Next up is we put up a circle with an X mark. So a circle with an X mark. Okay, here it is. So this block means sum. Okay. This circle with an X mark up here is called a sum. From its name, it adds or combines the two previous blocks that goes toward this block. So route N, vacuum on, wait, route and vacuum on. will be joined together. After our sum block, uh, we're going to put a rectangle next to it, naming it follow route. <laughs> Underneath it will be three diamond shaped blocks. Three diamond shaped blocks. This shape means decision. So if a decision is made or a condition is met, then our flow will go toward its respective direction. We'll name our first diamond block finished route. Next to it will be battery low. And the last will be vacuum full. We'll put up some arrows with names on them from finished route to battery low. It will be no. From battery low to vacuum full, it will be a no. And from vacuum full, oh. Um, okay.
over here, it will be a, another no. So yeah, next up, we'll put a parallelogram below our first diamond. We'll name it Vacuum Off. From finished route to vacuum off, it will be it will be a yes. Also from battery low. From battery low it'll be a yes. Alright, after vacuum off, we'll place a rectangle here and name it return to power dock. Below it will be a parallelogram and we'll name it power off. And finally, will be an ellipse shape. And this is where our end is. Are we done? Not yet. Vacuum full doesn't have a yes direction yet. So to continue, we'll put a parallelogram here and name it vacuum off another vacuum off yeah so from vacuum full it will be a yes after vacuum off we'll place a rectangle here and name it stop moving Afterwards, let's put a parallelogram here. So let's, okay, there. We put a parallelogram here and name it error indicator on. Hmm. So here is our flowchart of our robot friend. So to elaborate it further on how our automation works. So from the start, we will go, uh, the art automation will on, will be power on. After our automation is power on, it will scan the environment. After scanning the environment, it will generate a map and location. After that, it will plan a route. So, after it plans a route, uh, it will create a virtual document, a route document, and also change the state of our vacuum to on. So, after which the two will be combined. After our route is created and the vacuum is on, it will go to follow a route. So, after a route, it will go toward a decision block. So, if our if our route is finished, if the route that has been created here, if the route has been finished, it will go, it will change the vacuum to off. After the vacuum is off, it will turn to ro return to power dock. And after, after returning to its power dock, the automation will power off and then end. So that will be the, um, the end of our, of the automation. But for instance, if our route is not finished yet, we'll go towards the battery low. So if our battery low is yes, it will still it will go to here. It will change it will change the state of our vacuum to off and follow the process again. But for instance, if the battery low is no, but and it will go to another decision block. If our vacuum is full is not full for example it will go back to follow route and do the uh the finished route and very low decisions again 
If the vacuum full is a yes, the vacuum will be turned off. And then we'll go to, um, it will then stop moving. It will stop, uh, the, our automation will stop moving because since it's full, um, it can't uh, carry on its work anymore. So after it stops moving, it will indicate a some sort of uh, LED or just uh, some uh, indicator, an error indicator. So once the error indicator is on, uh, it will let us know that, oh, this is full. So we're going to um, do something about it. Either we'll turn off the power or uh, change the SAC inside the vacuum, our automation vacuum. So yeah, so that is how, how, how our vacuum automation works.